Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Zon Academy. Today, Corey Lambertson, who is ASICA's general manager of the Americas, is here to discuss with, with us 3D printed dentures with ASICA and Myerson's premium denture system, Trusana. Thank you so much for joining us today, Corey. Today, we'd like, this, today we'd like this to be an interactive webinar, and uh, Corey has compiled a few poll questions for us, so we'd love it for you to get involved and answer them for us. And he will be taking questions at the very end um, of the presentation. So you can type them in at the bottom of your screen. Uh, thank you everybody for showing up for us today. And here's Corey. Thank you, Fran. I appreciate the introduction. Uh, hello and welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Corey Lambertson, the GM of the Americas for SEGA. And today we're gonna be taking a look at the workflow for the Meyerson uh, denture resins uh, and how they tie in with the SEGA. Uh, before we get started, I do have a quick video that I'd like to, to show. So hopefully everybody can hear the sound well for it. Uh, let me just make sure, okay, everything should be good there. And so we'll watch this video and then we'll dive in and talk a little bit about the history of a SEGA. And then we'll really dive into how to use the Trusana resins, um, how to nest it, how to go through the proper protocol, and then we'll finish off with some Q&A. All right. Asiga is an integral part of my whole workflow, so I definitely recommend it. Asiga is renowned for its accuracy. It just delivers exceptional quality. The consistency and the incredible build quality. You get multiple materials and multiple products with one printer. The level of fine detail and the quality is excellent. It just adds that added bonus to your patient experience. Asigas are literally just plug and play. It's fast, it's very, very reliable. It's the best printer that we've ever found. Awesome. All right. Let's take a look at the history of a SEGA. So for anybody that's joined my presentations in the past, I always touch a little bit on a SEGA. Uh, and, and kind of where we came from. And I, I think it's very important that we all uh, uh, get a little bit of the history lesson of us, and then we'll dive into the really, the meats and potatoes of the presentation. And so uh, just so everybody is aware of, ASIGA actually formed in 2007, and we launched our first printer in 2011. And our ultimate goal was to, was to design and build reliable and affordable 3D printers for manufacturing and use products. And this goal is still what drives us today. And so, uh, every day when we're producing 3D printers and looking at applications of how it's going to be used, we're looking at really the end goal and the end game of manufacturing end use products, which is what has made it so successful in the, the dental uh, in the dental industry itself. And so we started in 2007, launched our first printer in 2011, and it was a, a, a building block for us to to uh, continue innovation. And we learn from each generation of printer and each chemistry or resin that comes out to continue to better ourselves uh, and until we are, uh, it, which landed us to be where we are today, which is amazing to see. There we go. So everything that we do at ASIGA is manufactured in-house. So we manufacture everything at our uh, in our head office in uh, Sydney, Australia. We have a total of uh, three facilities in Sydney that do our manufacturing, uh, all of our manufacturing uh, for our machines, our hardware, and our resin trays. And then beyond that, we do have technical centers in Europe. So we have an office in Germany, and then we also have an office in Ann Arbor, Michigan, which is where I'm located. The uh, the unique thing about ASIGA is that we actually manufacture everything in-house. And, in and when we say everything, we really mean it. 
uh, our, all of our 3D printers are manufactured in-house. Our resin is manufactured by a SEGA. So anything that has the SEGA name on it, it's manufactured by a SEGA. And even our software, which we'll see here in a few minutes, that is also uh, created by a SEGA itself. We have some key engineering principles that we follow for everything that we do. The first thing is that we want our equipment to be accurate. We need to be repeatable. It needs to be quick. And then most importantly, it needs to be open. And that's what really leads us to partnerships with companies such as Meyerson. And so we've always believed that our printers need to be open. Uh, we give the end user the ability to future-proof their business. And ultimately, the reason why we believe in an open system or open architecture 3D printer is that as a printer manufacturer, we don't find it right for us to be able to dictate what resins you should be using for your patients. We find it best that the end user has the ability to choose what material and what solution is best for their patient. And we enable that uh, freedom within a SEGA 3D printer, which is amazing to see. All right. So why 3D printing in dentistry? Why do we even want to have a 3D printer at your dental lab or your dental office? And the reason is applications galore and the materials continue to unlock the different applications and indications uh, from printing models to printing surgical guides to splints to uh, gingiva mask to trying dentures to permanent dentures, which we're going to talk about today. These are all applications that you can 3D print at your office. And it makes sense because with 3D printing, you're able to print every indication without any limitation for any patient. So almost every patient that you serve or every office that you serve, they can almost you can almost guarantee that they need some sort of printed application. And by us, utilizing an Asiga, you'll be able to print that on the system itself. So before we dive in further, let's talk a little bit about the workflow. When we look at 3D printing, itself, it has to start somewhere before it gets to the 3D printer. And it's always going to start at the patient. So we're going to pick up uh, the intraoral data of some sort, whether that's a intraoral scan or a manual impression. From there, the intraoral scan it, or the manual impression will either be scanned by a desktop scanner, uh, and then it will land in a CAD software of some sort. And so you will need to do your design aspect, and then you'll output to the 3D printer. In today's presentation, we're not going to cover the CAD design aspect, but we do have, um, I do have some news at the end of the presentation that will uh, give you some information on how to get information on CAD design. We're putting on a work, uh, uh, a hands-on work event, in our hands-on event, where you can actually come to our facility and see some of the CAD aspect for 3D printing. And so I'll cover that a little bit at the end. Uh, but the most important aspect about this slide is to understand that once the application gets to the printer, it's the same throughout. Before it gets to the printer, you have to have a CAD software. And before you have CAD software, you need to have the scanning input, whether you're receiving or retrieving intraoral scans from a doctor or you're scanning a manual impression or port model. So just keep that in mind that when you're going through those workflows, that you have to have that, that, that background information or background technology before you land at the 3D printer. Now, uh, Let's take a look at what you need to get started with Trusano. And so of course you'll need the 3D printers. Uh, so for the Trusano resins, the validated printers are the Asiga Max and the Pro 4K80. And you'll also need a wash unit. You'll need a curing unit. You'll need a, a bath solution, a water bath solution for part of the post curing process. You'll need a way to be able to stain and glaze the printed applications once it's completed, if you choose to do so. Uh, and then you'll, of course, you'll need the resin. And so one of the most important parts of the equation is the resin itself. And so you'll need the resin as well. But really, if you have the printer, the resin, a way to wash it, and, and a SEGA flash carrying unit, and then a water bath, you could actually get started with the system fairly easily uh, with very little investment to get into it or needed to get into it. So 
let's take a look at the, the printers themselves. So I wanted to have a slide that just talked about the printers. And I, I titled this slide, The Winning Combination, and it will make sense here in a moment. Uh, both of our printers, the Sega Max and the Pro 4K, they can both print the same uh, style indications. So they can both print denture teeth, they can both print denture bases, they can both print permanent crowns, dental models, surgical guides, etc. They can print the same application, same materials across the two machines. Um, when we look at printing on the Sega Max, you can print about five to six sets of denture teeth in 50 micron layers using the Trusano resin. It's about an hour and a half to two hours to print. Uh, for denture bases, depending on the size, you can print two and a half, or sorry, two, not two and a half dentures, two to five denture bases, depending on the size. Uh, we recommend printing those in 75 micron layers or 100 micron layers. And that's going to take about two to three hours to print. When we look at the Pro 4K, which is the bigger brother of the Sega Max, this is really the large scale production machine. Um, you're going to be able to print 15 to 20 sets of denture teeth in 50 micron layers in about an hour and a half to two hours. And uh, denture bases, uh, you can do 8 to 12 denture bases in 75 or 100 microns in two to three hours. Uh, and so they're both very effective and very quick. Now, depending on the size of your uh, laboratory or clinic, you may only need the Sega Max or you may need the Pro 4K. Now, if you're looking to produce digital dentures and that's your ultimate goal, I'm going to show you the winning combination. The winning combination is actually a Pro 4K ADUV and an Asiga Max UV. And the reason why I call that the winning combination is because the Asiga Max, really, if you have both machines, you should be printing your denture teeth with the Asiga Max. Uh, the Asiga Max is going to be a very effective and very efficient for printing denture teeth. And the cool thing about the Sega Max or the hidden gem about the Sega Max is that the resin tray is smaller. And you're, you're probably wondering, like, why does that have a benefit? Well, the actual added benefit is that with the smaller build envelope from the Sega Max, the, uh, you as an end user are able to use less resin and have more shades. And so you only need about 250 milliliters of resin to get a print off on the Sega Max. Versus the Pro 4K, you need almost a full kilogram in the resin tray. And if you have multiple shades of material uh, that you want to print, then having the Sega Max, you're able to actually print with a lower quantity or a lower volume of resin and have multiple trays to be able to print. So you actually get technically more out of the Sega Max for printing denture teeth than you would out of the Pro 4K per se. Uh, the other aspect of using the Pro 4K and the Sega Max as the winning combination is that it's almost two to one. You can almost get two print jobs on the Max done on teeth as you can one print job of denture bases on the Pro 4K. And so you can, you can actually match the output. So you can almost print the same sets of denture teeth in two runs on the Max as you can for one full build plate of denture bases on the Pro 4K. And so you can almost run those in sync with each other and match the output, which is another combination that a lot of people don't really think about or see until they have both machines running in their facility. All right. That's as much of a sales pitch I'm going to give from the Asiga side. Thanks for bearing with me. So what makes Trusana so special? Uh, Chris Schirmerhorn did an excellent presentation a few weeks ago, and he talked about the Trusana resin and did a little bit of a deeper dive. Um, I'm not going to spend that much time on this, uh, but really the biggest characteristics when we look at the Trusana denture base and denture tooth resin um, is that it is it is a high high impact strength material. It's ten times stronger than the uh, than the ISO standard for testing. It has a high flexural strength. Um, it's actually become stronger when it's in the oral cavity, up to fifty seven percent. And then for the wear resistance, it actually is twice as wear resistance compared to PMMA. And so it's actually a phenomenal material and it's very strong, very durable. And it's, you know, a permanent, a premium permanent denture base and denture tooth resin. Um, when we look at the shades of the material, it comes in different shades for the tooth or for the T shades. You have A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, and a bleach. And then for the denture base resin, you have original pink, light pink, reddish pink, and then dark pink. 
uh, available for your denture base resins. And so you do get the, the spectrum of uh, spectrum of uh, shades that you need to be able to fit majority of your patients. All right. There we go. Let's take a look at the printing process. So this is where the fun actually gets to really begin. And we'll step away from the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, we're actually going to show a live nesting technique uh, for the denture teeth and denture bases. And then we'll jump back to the presentation. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my Asiga Composer software. And I believe it's loading on my second screen. And so we'll pull it over here. All right, perfect. So I have my Asiga Composer software open. And the very first thing that we need to do is we need to create a new build. Now I am running the latest version of Composer. This is Composer 2.0.3. I am in dark mode because I like the dark mode. I think it's easier for me to, to view and it's gentler on my eyes. Uh, from here, we're gonna choose which printer we're gonna print with and then choose the material we want to print with. Um, if you were to select down on your material drop-down box and if you don't see the material you want to print with, you can actually go ahead and open up the material library. So I can log into my Asiga account. So if you have an Asiga 3D printer, you'd be able to do the same. And under the material library, you'll find the Meyerson profile, you would select on the Meyerson tab and then you would download the profiles. Now I can see that we only have the tooth material available. The base material should be added in the next 24 hours. Um, so you would simply download it from here and then you would import it in to your Asiga Composer software. I already have both in my system. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and start with printing some denture bases. So I'm going to find, I'm going to choose a material that I want to print with, and then I'm going to go down and find my material. So this is the Trusana Original Pink Profile. Uh, so far, the uh, OP Original Pink Profile actually works on all the profiles. So you, there's only one profile needed. And then you'll choose what layer thickness. The engineers... Uh, found that the printing at a 75 micron layer, you actually yield the best results for the for the Trusana denture base resin. And so we're going to keep it at 75 microns. And then for printing on the Pro 4K, we're going to want to use the low force tray and we'll simply select OK. Before I dive into this any further, I do want to point out that Trusana has an excellent guide that covers you on how to actually set up the printer and how to get started. Uh, it also covers like what equipment you need, what extra uh, protection you need when handling the materials. Uh, and then also it does cover the nesting techniques that you need to follow for the denture base and the denture tooth resin. Now, just something I wanna point out, the denture base resin, they're recommending to place it with the intaglio or the, the socket side facing the build platform, not intaglio, sorry, the socket side facing the build platform and the occlusal surface facing the build platform. Uh, we did have, I did have communication with one of the uh, engineers that's working with Meyerson. And they said that technically this, the 20 degree angle can be adjusted. So if you need to print them on a more vertical, you uh, potentially could, they are doing more studies on that. So just be on the lookout if they do um, approve that or recommend that angulation, they will actually place this and update it into the instructions for use for you. All right. So let's go ahead and let's import in some dentures. So I have just a singular denture that I'm going to print. I'm going to select open and then I'm going to select open again. So I went ahead and imported in my denture base. And we're going to do this two ways. We're going to do it uh, how the IFU states. And then I am going to go on a little bit of a tangent and I'm going to place it on like a like an 80 degree inclination. So let me go ahead and clone this. And we'll mess with this one here in a minute. So in the instructions for use, it states to place this so it's uh, uh, vertical or sorry, horizontal to the build platform and then a 20 degree angle. So if I just right click on it and hold, and if I move my mouse, I can see once I hit a 20 degree angle, close to it, perfect.
And then I'm going to go ahead and rotate this denture base so it's on an 80 degree angle or so. Perfect. And then let's go ahead and add our supports. And so in the IFU, it states to go ahead and place it on the socket side. And then it asks for you to go to remove any supports from the internals of the sockets itself. So I'm going to go ahead and add my supports. I'm going to go to advanced. For this, we're going to deselect the lattice supports. I'm going to go off selected. And I'm just going to simply hit apply. I'll wait for it to process. You can see it does provide quite a few, quite a few supports. And then they actually recommend to come in and remove, for example, these extra supports on the socket. Now we can see this is a bit time consuming. And since we're in a webinar, we'll just do half of the denture base itself. there. All right, it actually looks good. So I just did half of it. You would need to clean up the other side before continuing. And then you'd simply print as is. Let's go ahead and let's jump over to this other denture. And so this denture um, I was speaking with one of our contacts at our office in Germany, and he did some tests with printing with actually the lattice style supports with the material. It actually works really well with printing with the lattice material or lattice supports. And so let's go ahead and simply hit apply. And now we can see the actual support structures and how it supported it. And that lattice support actually turns out really well. Now, this is something that the that the teams are looking at to see if it's something that can be possible and to, to uh, add to the instructions for use. Uh, but I do honestly prefer printing uh, a, a more vertical inclination uh, versus uh, this degree here. Okay. So from here, after we have our uh, structures supported, we now need to send it to the printer. And so I'm going to open up my print or my build wizard, and I'm going to go to name this. So let's go name this Trusana Bases. And I'll simply select next. And then something we want to add in with the material is uh, whenever you're printing the Trusana denture base material, you want to print with the full build type and all parts and placement underneath. And so you'll actually want to print with a full base plate on there. Even if you're only printing one denture base, it is best to print with a full with this material. Uh, from here, we'll simply select print. And the job will be transferred over to the 3D printer. So we'll wait for this to load. And then we'll go ahead and start nesting the teeth material. While we're looking at this, let's pull up our, um, our little document that talks about the denture teeth. So for the denture teeth, we need to print it at 50 micron layers. And then from here, we can see that we have our, uh, we're gonna go ahead and generate the supports and we're gonna do it just to the occlusal surface on this. Now, the nice thing about the denture teeth here and so there's really not much editing that you have to do. And so we'll leave that as is. Almost done loading. Once it's done loading, we'll go ahead and view the slices.
just about there. Fifty seven percent, fifty eight percent. This is where I really think our software needs like a like elevator music while it's while it's doing the transfer of the data. I would sing, but you guys really do not want me to do that. All right. Eighty five percent, eighty six percent. Almost done loading. All right, perfect. So I always want to view the slices. We're going to look in and view slice number one. I can view that I have my base plate. And if I press play, it'll go through the slices for me. Perfect. From here, let's go ahead and set up the job for the denture teeth. And so the denture teeth is going to follow a very similar pattern. I'm going to choose my Sega Max for this. I'm going to find the Trusana Myersen tooth resin. There we go, 50 microns. And I'm simply going to select OK. I'm going to add in my denture teeth. Now, this design is actually a fairly basic design, and the denture is actually mirrored on the other half of it, so it's for like show purposes. Let me go ahead and just clone this real quick, or mirror it, so we have the opposing. All right, perfect. All right. So from here, we're going to do the same, or follow the same process. We're going to actually orient these at a 20-degree angulation. So I'm going to first just make everything, so or all the parts, so they're parallel to the build platform. All right, and let's go ahead and make these at a or 20 degree. So I can see my mouse. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate so they're at 20. And then this guy here and this guy here. Rotate so that it's a 20 degree. All right, perfect. And now I'm gonna go ahead and auto place my parts. And now I'm going to apply my supports. For the tooth resin, I'm not going to do anything different. I'm just simply going to hit apply. And it'll apply, it'll automatically apply the supports for me to all the parts that's needed. All right. From here, we're going to go ahead and uh, name the profile. Enter teeth. Five truths on them. And I'll simply select print. From here, the software is going to take the three-dimensional structures and cut them up into slices and transfer the data to the Asiga Max. So a fairly simple process. Uh, and it's very effective, very efficient to be able to do. And so I was able to nest both sets of denture or the, the denture teeth and the denture base. Didn't really take me that much time. Honestly, I think it probably took more time just transferring the data than it did actually manipulating the data. Um, and that's how simple the workflow is inside of the Asiga Composer software. So let's jump back to our uh, PowerPoint presentation. All right. So just some key tips when we're looking at the Asiga Composer software and nesting the truce on a resin, we wanna orient the parts at a 20 degree angle. Uh, we need about two millimeters from the build platform, a minimum of four millimeters spacing between the parts. Um, and we wanna go ahead and use the auto support function and then delete any supports that may not be needed. So for example, in the socket area, uh, it's actually recommended to remove those supports. From there, after you transfer the data from the computer in the composer software to the printer, now we need to prepare the printer. The most important aspect that I, I, I recommend 
anybody or everybody to follow is to read the instructions for use for the resin itself. Understand the resin before you start using it. Find out what, what tools you need. Uh, this will help you in making sure that you're set up for success. So read the instructions for use. You're going to go ahead and shake the resin for five minutes. And then you're going to start with a, uh, a fresh resin tray for each shade. So if you have different shades of the base and the different shades of the tooth, make sure you're using a new tray for those. And then uh, you're just going to add in resin. For the Asiga Max, it's about 250 grams. For the Pro 4K, it's about one full kilo before you start printing. After it's done printing, there is a post printing process that we need to follow. So the first thing is that we need to wash. And so we're going to remove the build platform uh, with the supports attached. And we're going to do a two bath system. And so we're going to wash the parts for two minutes in a dirty bath and one minute in a clean bath. And we'll then we'll let it air dry. Uh, for the denture uh, bases, you can actually remove the supports beforehand. Uh, for denture teeth material, I believe I actually recommend to keep the supports on in the wash part itself. Once you have the parts completely washed and you let them dry completely, you're going to go ahead and start assembling the denture base. And so the very first thing that you're going to do is you're going to remove the supports and remove any sort of scarring. And so you'll see that after you peel off the supports from the printed parts, you're going to see some natural scarring. You can actually see it here. So see on these parts, you see how there's some scarring here. So that scarring will, uh, you'll actually need to remove that. And I recommend using a fiber wheel, uh, a coarse, uh, a medium coarseness fiber wheel. And that actually gets in there and it's it's soft enough that it doesn't damage the, the big structure or the denture base itself or the teeth, but it does remove all the little support nibs. So I highly recommend the fiber wheel. From there, after you have all the supports removed, uh, you're gonna go ahead and do like a dry fitment of the teeth in there to make sure that they fit, make sure there's no rock, make any adjustments that's needed. And then you're gonna use the bond, the Trusana bond resin uh, for bonding the actual teeth to the base. And so you'll go ahead and you'll paint in in each socket some of the bond resin and then you're going to go ahead and press in, or sorry, use a brush and make sure that it's fully coating inside each little socket. And then once that is completed, you'll actually use some of the excess that's on the brush and do a quick primer over the uh, socket side of the teeth. And then you're gonna squeeze the denture base and the denture teeth together. From there, as you're squeezing it out, there's gonna be some excess material. You're gonna need to go ahead and remove that and wipe it away. And then after you get it wiped and removed, you will then go ahead and use a tack light to do a to do a initial cure. So this tack light, all you're doing is you're just setting an initial bond for the denture tooth to the denture base to make sure that they are secured and being held in place. Um, this is not a this is not like the final permanent cure. So you cannot deliver to the patient. You should not go on to polishing and characterization at this point in time. This is just simply setting the teeth to the base itself. So once you have the teeth in the base set, you will then go ahead and use the Asiga flash curing unit. And so you'll place the printed parts or the two parts that are fused together inside of the Asiga flash curing unit. And you're going to let it, uh, you're going to put the curing unit to a set time of 30 minutes so on the back of the Asiga flash curing unit. There's three timers, there's two minutes, three minutes, and then a um, uh, 30 minutes. You're going to set it to 30 minutes and you're actually going to cure this denture base a total of 12 minutes on each side. After you go through that 12 minutes on each side, you're gonna seal the denture base and uh, the, the denture into a plastic bag, and you're gonna place that into a water bath for 10 minutes at 80 degrees Celsius. Once that 10 minutes is up, you will then let the denture cool completely before handling. So that just covered the cure process. Once you have it completely cured, you can then move on to the finishing process. So for the final finishing, we're gonna go in and remove any sort of extra defects. And then uh, if you want to go ahead and polish it, you'll go ahead and simply uh, use a lathe. So use a wet lathe with pumice and then a polish. Uh, you can use like an acrylic polish or any special polish. Actually the, um, the Trusana resin, they recommend, let me pull it up real quick just to make sure. Actually, you can see where I robbed some of the photos. The uh, um, for finishing, 
um, they recommend uh, using like Duraflex or other dental materials from Myersen itself. And so you will use their polishing compounds and to be able to get it, to bring it to a nice polish finish. Uh, now that's one solution. If you don't want to use like a manual method, you do have the ability to use a glazing or a characterization kit. And so you'll want to read the instructions on how to use the glazing techniques. But most cases you're going to use, uh, you're going to do like some surface abrasion to introduce mechanical retention. Uh, make sure that you shake all the shades really well. And then you'll, you'll actually apply the desired uh, shades and uh, uh, glazing materials to the denture and do a final post cure on that. You'll want to read the IFU for that, for the coloring kit to make sure that you're doing a proper cure to make sure all the active monomer is completed and it's properly cured before moving forward. And if you follow it properly, you should have a fancy looking denture as such. And so you're able to, to, to go from start to finish using an Asiga 3D printer and using the Chusana resin to be able to produce a, a fantastic looking denture. Uh, just so you're aware, there's tons of procedures available on the Chusana website. I highly recommend that if you're getting into the Chusana resin, go to the Meyerson website, view the different documents that they have. And also I found yesterday on the Zahn website, there's actually quite a few, or sorry, Zahn's YouTube page, there's quite a few videos that explain the whole process start to finish for you. And so if you need a little bit of an extra helping hand on how to uh, manipulate the composer software or how to use the, the uh, Chusana resin, there's tons of videos on the uh, Zahn YouTube page for you to follow and, and guide you through. All right, so we're actually concluding the webinar. Uh, for those that are interested, we actually have a hands-on course that's gonna be in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and it's on November 10th. So that's coming up in two weeks. Uh, it's on a Friday, it's 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're gonna cover um, all aspects of the uh, Trusana resin. Uh, I believe there actually is some extra goodies that will be uh, presented on as well. Um, so if you want to get that extra deeper dive, and if you want to see like some tips on how to do like the CAD design aspect or have any questions on the CAD design, please feel free to reach out to your Zon rep so you can get scheduled to come to uh, the hands-on event. This is the first one. I'm sure we'll do more, uh, but it's always exciting to see the first one kick off. All awesome. right. Awesome, Corey. Thank you so much for this presentation. We're going to open things up for questions now, but I do have the poll um, results that I could share with you right now. So if you want to comment on any of that. So the first one was, what printer are you using in your laboratory? And it was split up the middle. 50% are using Asiga printers and 50% of our attendees are using others. Okay. So that's cool. Um, yeah. Are you printing dentures in your laboratory? Again, Yes, 50% and no, 50%. What do you think about that, about people getting started with uh, 3D printed dentures in their in their laboratories? Yeah, absolutely. So it's it's kind of like the, the uh, honestly, I find it to be like the next, it's the next gold rush in dentistry, uh, 3D printing dentures. And so the, you know, you see people that are getting into it, maybe individuals that got into it right away, right when, right when materials became available, they may have been burnt on, uh, just the overall performance of the resins. But honestly, the resins are evolving so much now that uh, that you can actually properly produce a final aesthetic denture through 3D printing. And and I think people were a little leery at first, but now they're starting to get into it. And so I'm actually, it's fantastic to see that it's still a, you know, a large percentage of people are not in it yet, because that means that there's, there's a, a bunch of, or, or a pretty high market potential to, for people to get into it. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Corey, as far as like 3D printed materials, as far as laboratories that are not even printing yet, do you feel like something's easier than not to like get into, to start and get your feet wet? Like, what do you think about that for the for the people that aren't 3D printing at all? Yeah, so I think the, honestly, the biggest hurdle for anybody that's not doing digital dentures that's interested in getting into it, um, it's not the 3D printing side. The 3D printing side is actually like the lowest a barrier of entry. It's the lowest hurdle to learn. The most challenging aspect is actually the CAD side. And so the for anybody that's interested in getting into 3D printing dentures, uh, 
do, I mean, uh, my recommendation would be to, to study and learn as much as you can from the CAD software side and understand the CAD solutions and the CAD softwares to, to be able to make sure that you can effectively design a digital denture for 3D printing. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's one of the biggest, one of the biggest keys. Um, when it, when it comes into uh, like actual 3D printing dentures, once you start producing your first couple dentures, you're going to look at it and be like, wow, that is something I did not produce at all. I didn't design that, but it, you actually did. And you learn a lot from going from design to 3D printing because then you actually be able to see what you produced firsthand. And so uh, for anybody that's getting started, if you're an analog lab and wanting to go digital on the denture side, I highly recommend that you actually start producing uh, digital dentures side by side your analog cases until you're able to, until you're able to, um, dial in your workflow and your process and procedures on your design side and printing side for the digital dentures that you're actually able to mimic what you can do by hand in an analog world and then start delivering some of those dentures with the cases and I, I think your doctors will be quite surprised once you have that dialed in how simple it is and how accurate it is how the fit is and uh yeah that's I guess that's my two cents for it I have a question coming in that's saying what if I'm just learning CAD, but I want to get into printing? What do you think about outsourcing to start? Oh, absolutely. So, I, you know, outsourcing is is never a bad thing. There's quite a few uh, outsource centers for, for designing. I believe Zahn has an outsource center for designing. There's other okay. companies that are out there for, for outsourcing your design work, too. Um, I think that's a great way to be able to kind of start dipping your toes into digital denture fabrication. And so you could you could technically get your scan data in, outsource it to a design center, have it come back in, and then you could simply uh, uh, just 3D print it in-house. Absolutely. And there's actually quite a few companies that do that today. Awesome. So the next poll was, which resins are you using for 3D printed dentures? 75% are using Trusana. Wow. And 25% are using uh, Lucitone Digital Print and mm -hmm. zero, no one, you know, said that they were using other. So mm -hmm. that was pretty interesting to see as well. Yeah. You know, part of the sons, that was cool. That's great. Well, if anybody has any more questions for Corey, absolutely type them in at the bottom. We have a little bit of time. I'm just going to tell you what's up next on Zon Academy. On 1115, we have Trusana's Premium Denture System three-shape design to fabrication. And our presenters for that will be Daniel Alter and Chris Shermerhorn. So that'll be a good one. Dan is gonna be diving deep into the actual design of the denture, while Chris will do kind of in the lab what it's like you know, for the actual print and the fabrication and finishing. So that'll be a good one. And you can absolutely register. Uh, right now, registration is open for that. I uh, want everybody to know that, again, we are having a hands-on training on 3D printed dentures featuring Trusana's uh, material at the Asiga facility on November 10th. And that's gonna be a great one. I am so looking forward to that. Plus being able to go into the Asiga facilities, that is really cool to do. So again, you can go on Eventbrite and you can register for that as well. Um, there is, this is a no charge to go to this course. So that's pretty great along with uh, six CE credits. So it's it's a no brainer to head on over there to Michigan. Our 3D printing roadshows are coming to a city near you. We are heading to Long Island, which is my hometown uh, this Friday, October 27th. Going over to Atlanta, Georgia on November 3rd. We'll be in Tacoma, Washington on November 17th. And we will be in Fort Lauderdale, Florida on uh, December 1st. And you'll be able to meet Corey in person at that roadshow. We're so happy to have you there, Corey. Absolutely. I look forward to it. Um, just in case you're interested in adding an Asiga printer to your laboratory, now's the best time to do it. Um, we have great financing options for you, one being Route 66 which requires no payments for six months. So that's well into 2024 um, and no interest as well for that long. Um, six months after the no payment startup, that's $99 uh, per month that you'll be required to pay. But I just want everybody to check in with their accountants because section 179 comes into play with this. Um, you will be able to write off any equipment 
um, that you purchase from now until the end of the year. So now's the perfect time. You know, you can call your Zion representative. They'd be more than happy to get you involved with Henry Schein Financial Services. Um, that group will be able to speak to you and give you a little more information on it. And if you have any questions at all, our high-tech um, equipment team will be able to answer any questions on any of the Asiga printers that you would like, um, you know, to learn more about. So I just want to thank you again, Corey. It's always a pleasure. We really appreciate everything you do for us here at Zon Academy, and we're looking forward to the 1110 course and seeing you again uh, for us in December. And I wish everybody a wonderful day, and thank you all for joining us here on Zon Academy. Thanks for having me, Fran. Have a great day, everybody.